Okay, so good evening everyone. So good evening everyone. So last time, uh, yes, Akanksha is there. Yes, Akanksha, good evening. So last time I completed, uh, uh, I completed hypersensitivity reactions. So now I have to do two more uh, parts of this chapter. That is, I will be doing immunodeficiency, primary immunodeficiency diseases, and I will be talking about uh, transplant uh, transplant pathology so let us come to primary okay let us come to immunodeficiency diseases immunodeficiency diseases so let us look at immunodeficiency diseases yes Sri Devi good evening good evening Sri Devi okay so let's come to yes Adesh good evening all of you good evening okay so now coming to immunodeficiency diseases Okay, in immuno, you know, immunodeficiency diseases are of two types. We divide them into two categories: primary, primary immunodeficiency diseases, and secondary, secondary immunodeficiency diseases. Okay, always remember, secondary are most are more common than primary. And you know, in secondary, you have secondary causes of secondary immunodeficiency diseases are many, which you already know. And causes of secondary immunodeficiency diseases include Number one, infections. Infections like very important HIV AIDS. So remember most common immunodeficiency disease of the world is HIV AIDS. So viral infections like HIV AIDS, they can cause immunodeficiency. Then second, uh, uh, chemotherapy and radiotherapy. Chemotherapy and radiotherapy. Radiotherapy. All of them, they can cause immunodeficiency. Chemotherapy, radiotherapy, malnutrition, malnutrition, etc. All these are causes of secondary immunodeficiency. Okay, what I am going to deal with tomorrow is the primary immunodeficiency. Uh, deal with today is primary immunodeficiency diseases. Okay, now very important. So this is what I have to cover, primary immunodeficiency diseases. So now how do we categorize primary immunodeficiency diseases? Primary immunodeficiency diseases are categorized into number one, B cell disorders, B cell disorders, number two, T cell disorders, T cell disorders leading to immunodeficiency and third is combined B and T. So third is combined, combined B and T cell disorders. So how do we classify immunodeficiency diseases and then um, Fourth, there's one more category which we have already covered in the chapter of inflammation and that is phagocytic dysfunction. Phagocytic dysfunction. Dysfunction. So last is phagocytic dysfunction. I'll be covering these three. Phagocytic dysfunction you already know now. What is What do we have in phagocytic dysfunction? If you remember, in the chapter of inflammation, we did leukocyte adhesion deficiency type 1. Type 1. That comes in leukocyte adhesion deficiency type 2 type 2 then we had shidai kigashi shidai kigashi and last we had so we had shidai kigashi and last chronic granulomatous diseases which we have already covered in the which i have covered in the chapter of inflammation so they also come in the category of immunodeficiency diseases okay so lad type 1 lad type 2 shidai kigashi and chronic granulomatous diseases these are phagocytic dysfunctions which also come in the category of primary immunodeficiency diseases and all these four i have covered in the chapter of inflammation so now what i am going to cover is b cell disorders t cell disorders that lead to immunodeficiency and combined b and t cell disorders okay so now let us come to so in in the primary catch so let us start in the primary category, let me come to first, that is B cell disorders. B cell disorders. Okay, now we have B cell disorders. Okay, before I start with B cell disorders, you know, all the lymphocytes, whether B or T or natural killer cells, they are produced in the bone marrow. You already know that. And in the bone marrow, you know, you have a hematopoietic stem cell. You have a stem cell who is the mother of all the cells. If you remember, this hematopoietic stem cell produces a myeloid stem cell, myeloid stem cell and a lymphoid stem cell, lymphoid stem cell. If you remember this, this I have already told you, myeloid stem cell and a lymphoid stem cell. 
Myeloid stem cell produces all the blood cells, differentiates and forms all the blood cells except lymphocytes. So all the blood cells. So myeloid stem cell will produce the erythroid series, erythroid series which will produce RBCs. Myeloid stem cell will produce the granulocytic series, granulocytic series which will produce the granulocytes. Granulocytes you know are neutrophils, eosinophils, basophils. Then the granulocytic series, myeloid stem cell will produce the monocytic series, monocytic series which produces the monocytes, monocytes. And then my common myeloid stem cell also produces the megakaryocytic series, megakaryocytic series that produces the platelets, megakaryocytes or and platelets. Okay, so this is myeloid. Okay, now lymphoid stem cell. Now let me come to this. So this common lymphoid stem cell, uh, so this hematopoietic stem cell also produces a lymphoid stem cell, lymphoid stem cell. Okay, now if you look at this lymphoid stem cell now, this lymphoid stem cell is going to produce the B lymphocytes, T lymphocytes and natural killer cells. So this lymphoid stem cell, it produces pro-B cells, pro-B cells produce pre-B, pre-B cells and pre-B cells produce B lymphocytes, B cells. Similarly, this lymphoid stem cell produces pro-T cells, pro-T produce pre-T and pre-T produce T cells. And then this also produces pro-NK, pro then pre-NK and this produces the natural killer cells. So this is how lymphocytes are produced. So you have a lymphoid stem cell which produces pro-cells, pre-cells and then B, T or NK cells. Okay. So now let us come to B cell disorders. Let us come to so in, in case of B category, we have pre, pro B cells, pre B cells and then mature B cells. And you know then it is the B cells which become plasma cells and plasma cells are going to produce antibodies. So you already know that B cells produce plasma cells, plasma cells produce antibodies, antibodies play a role in humoral immunity. And you know T cells play a role in cell mediated immunity. So antibodies play a role in humoral immunity. We already know this, they play a role in humoral immunity. T cells play a role in cell mediated immunity and natural killer cells play a role in innate immunity. They play a role in innate immunity. So this is the function of all these cells. Okay. Now let us come to the B cell disorders as we have started. So I am going to talk about first category in this that is B cell disorders. Okay, in B cell disorders, the first category that I'm going to talk about is first entity. So three, I'll cover three entities here. So first entity is Burton's A gamma globulinemia. Burton's, so it is Burton's A gamma globulinemia. So first entity in this category is Burton's A gamma Glomulemia. Okay, Bruton's A gamma glomulemia means complete absence of antibodies. So in Bruton's A gamma glomulemia, this is an X-linked recessive disorder. It is X-linked recessive disorder where there is, which is due to mutation in BTK gene. Mutation in BTK gene on X chromosome. So BTK gene is on X chromosome, hence it's an X-linked recessive disorder. So this is due to mutation in BTK gene. Okay, what is the full form of BTK? BTK stands for B cell tyrosine kinase. What is BTK? BTK stands for B cell tyrosine kinase. So it's due to mutation in BTK gene which is on X chromosome. Okay, now what is the function of this gene? You know, you already know, we already know there is a lymphoid stem cell. We have seen this now. There is a lymphoid stem cell which produces pro B cells Pro B cells become pre B and they produce B cells. So now what is the problem in Burton's A gamma globulinemia? These pro and pre B cells, they fail to get converted to B cells. So pro and pre B cells are there, but they don't form B cells because to convert to B cells, they need an enzyme called B cell tyrosine kinase, which is missing because the gene is mutated. So to convert pro and pre B cells to mature B cells, 
So to convert pro and pre B cells to mature B cells, we need an enzyme called BTK. What is BTK? B cell tyrosine kinase. You need that enzyme B cell tyrosine kinase. So that is missing here. So if you look at this, so there's a in Bruton's A gamma globulinia, there is mutation in BTK gene which is which resides on the X chromosome. So BTK gene encodes for an enzyme called B cell tyrosine kinase. It encodes for an enzyme called B cell tyrosine kinase. So that enzyme, the gene gets mutated, so the enzyme is not there. As a result of this mutation, because of this mutation in this BTK gene, now what happens? Pro and pre B cells, pre B cells, they fail to get converted, fail to, they fail to get converted to mature B cells. So they don't form mature B cells. So mature B cells. As a result, now there are no mature B cells. Okay. So there are no mature B cells. So no B cells means no plasma cells no plasma cells and no plasma cells means no antibodies. So no plasma cells means no antibodies. So this no antibodies means now A gamma globulinemia. Gamma globul A means absence of antibodies in the blood. A gamma globulinemia. So there's A gamma globulinemia. Okay. So now if you look at them, so that they do, do not have any antibodies at all. So now clinical features, what do they have? Clinical features, number one, it's an X-linked recessive disorder. So it is more in boys. So usually it will be boys seen in, seen in males, in male child. Okay. Now when will the disease present? Now, uh, okay, how will the child present? The child will have recurrent bacterial and enteroviral infections. So they have recurrent bacterial. So the child has recurrent bacterial and enteroviral. Entero, enteroviral infections. So they have recurrent bacterial infections because, you know, to get rid of bacteria and enteroviruses, we need antibodies. So there are no antibodies. So they have recurrent bacterial and enteroviral infections. After six months of age, six months of birth. So after six months of birth, why after six months? Because you know, till six months, maternal antibodies are there, which keep providing protection. Then as maternal antibodies disappear, now the child is not having his own antibodies. It's a male child not having his own antibodies. So they start having recurrent bacterial and enteroviral infections. Okay, so this is how they present. Okay, now second uh, uh, lab tests, labs, if you look at labs, look at, do a peripheral smear, and do a peripheral smear, absent B cells, so there are no B cells, so absent B cells, okay, second, you know, uh, absent B cells, one, two, decrease antibodies in the blood, Depuse, decrease immunoglobulins in the blood, so decreased immunoglobulins in the blood, so the immunoglobulins in the blood are reduced. Achha, three, now, you know, look at the lymph node, the spleen, the tonsils, everywhere. You know, I told you in the last class, where do you find B cells in the lymphoid tissue, in the secondary lymphoid tissue, and even in the bone marrow, you have B cells. Where? The, the B cells in the lymph, secondary lymphoid tissue, that is in the lymph nodes, in the tonsils, in the spleen, uh, in the thymus, the, lymph, the B cells form follicles which are located in the cortex. So B cells are in the follicles located in the cortex. And even the bone marrow has follicles. Follicles always contain B cells. So now what do you see? If you look at the, uh, 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 if you look at the lymph nodes and the tonsils and if you look at all the secondary lymphoid organs, the follicles disappear because there are no B cells. So there is absent or scanty B cells. So you see absent or scanty cells or absent or scanty lymph lymphocytes lymphocytes in the follicles so follicles are in other words follicles are atrophic follicles in the secondary lymphoid organs secondary lymphoid organs lymphoid organs where are the follicles located follicles are in the cortex so the follicles undergo atrophy the follicles because there are no b cells who forms the follicles B cells form the follicle, so they are all missing. So this is what we see. Okay, now second, now, now uh, these children, the complications that they can have other than the infections, of course, they have recurrent infections. Other than the infections, 
they also have increased risk of autoimmune diseases increased risk of they are at increased risk of developing autoimmune diseases so they are at increased risk of developing autoimmune diseases okay what is the treatment treatment is intravenous you have to give them iv immunoglobulin so treatment number one replacement with intravenous immunoglobulins so you you have to give them iv immunoglobulins and second hematopoietic stem cell transplantation transplantation hematopoietic stem cell transplantation hematopoietic stem cell transplantation okay so this is the first disorder in b cell category that is brutal's a gamma globulinemia which is an excellent recessive disorder second entity in this category is second entity b cell disorder is common variable immunodeficiency cvid which we call common variable immunodeficiency so second entity is common variable immunodeficiency or cvid 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 now this cvid it's a heterogeneous group of disorder heterogeneous Het what do i mean by heterogeneous group you know a number of different mutations or number of causes can cause cv a, a number of i mean there are number of causes so there are many causes heterogeneous group with many causes it can be inherited it can be acquired also so it can be both inherited and acquired so number of this okay now problem here in cvid what is the problem now you know we have a common lymphoid stem cell common lymphoid stem cell produces pro b cells pro b cells produces pre b pre b produces mature b mature b produces plasma cells plasma cells produce antibodies okay now in bruton z gamma globulinemia we already saw what was the problem in bruton z gamma globulinemia these pro and pre b cells they were not getting converted to plasma cells okay so they were not getting converted to mature b cells so there were no mature b cells no plasma cells no antibodies in cvid common variable immunodeficiency the problem is not with pro or pre b cells now the problem lies at a lower level so what is the problem here so here now in cvid mature b cells fail to get converted to plasma cells so that means pro b cells are also there pre b cells are there mature b cells are also there but mature b cells fail to get converted to plasma cells therefore there are no antibodies so here the problem lies that there are mature b cells are there but they don't get converted to plasma cells so what is the problem in cvid in cvid mature b cells mature b cells fail to get converted to converted to plasma cells plasma mumtaz fail to get converted to mature b cells fail to get converted to plasma cells so if you look at the dharu acha so now here if you look at the peripheral smear in the peripheral smear normal number of b cells normal number of b cells are there so b cells are okay if you look at the peripheral smear b cells are okay but if you look at the lymph node or if you look at the bone marrow if you look at the bone marrow and the lymph node there are decreased plasma cells decreased plasma cells and in the blood if you look at the blood in the blood there are decreased immunoglobulin so decreased antibodies in the blood so amount of antibodies are decreased in the blood and usually clinical features if you look at the clinical features usually this disease is uh, it is seen in age group age is 20 to 30s it presents in 20 to 30s and i already also told you it can be inherited or acquired inherited or acquired and what all can these people have number one they also have increased risk of autoimmune diseases autoimmune diseases number one so increase risk of autoimmune diseases to bronchiectasis bronchiectasis so increase risk of autoimmune diseases bronchiectasis three increase risk of developing lymphomas lymphoma so increase risk of developing autoimmune diseases bronchiectasis lymphomas and because of their a deficiency of plasma cells and anti antibodies they have sinopulmonary infections they have sinopulmonary they have sinopulmonary infections so they have they are they they develop sinopulmonary 
infection. So this is what we call as common variable immunodeficiency or CVID. Okay, common variable immunodeficiency. So difference between this and Bruton's A gamma globulinemia is Bruton's is X-linked number one, and in Bruton's the problem is pro and pre B cells don't form B cells. So there are no B cells at all, no B cells, no plasma cells, no antibodies. Whereas in CVID B cells are there, but B cells are not becoming plasma cells and producing antibodies. Okay, yeah. coming to the third entity, last entity in this category, C. C is selective IgA deficiency. Selective IgA deficiency. So what does this tell you? This tells you that there is deficiency of only IgA antibody. Now first, this is the most common primary immunodeficiency disease. Primary immunodeficiency disease. So from all the primary immunodeficiency diseases that I am going to talk about, Today, whether the B cell category, T cell category or combined B and T cell category, the most common primary immunodeficiency disease is selective IgA deficiency. Cause, cause not known. So unknown. We don't know the cause. Cause not known. We don't know the cause. Okay. Now, uh, in selective IgA deficiency, IgA, only IgA antibody is missing. So lab test, if you do lab test, there is in the blood, there is decreased IgA. Only IgA antibodies is decreased. IgG, IgM, IgG and IgM levels are normal. IgG and IgM levels are normal. Only IgA antibody is reduced. Okay, so now because IgA antibody is not there, what are the uh, what do, what are the type of infections that they have? You know, IgA antibody is present in our respiratory tract. It protects us from respiratory infections. It is also found in our GI tract, IgA antibody. It is secreted in the GI, GI mucosa and protects us from infections there. So, first clinical features. First, most patients are asymptomatic. Most, mostly, asymptomatic. majority are asymptomatic. So, majority, majority people with IgA are asymptomatic. Majority are asymptomatic. And if they have infection, they have... So they have uh, uh, airway infections, airway infection. So in airways, what will they have? They have sinopul recurrent sinopulmonary infections. So they have recurrent sinopulmonary, sinopulmonary infections. So they have recurrent sinopulmonary infections. And second, GIT. In GIT, they have diarrhea, diarrhea. And G diarrhea, you know, diarrhea caused by giardia. So they have giardiasis. GRDSs. Then other than that, they are also at increased risk of autoimmune diseases. Increased risk of autoimmune diseases. Example, celiac disease. Celiac disease. So increased risk of autoimmune diseases. Okay, Adesh, sinopulmonary. Sino means sinuses. You have these sinuses here. The frontal sinus, the ethmoidal sinus, the maxillary sinus, infections of the sinuses and pulmonary means respiratory infections like pneumonia, like bronchopneumonia bron uh, and, uh, uh, and uh, 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 they have pneumonias, they can have pneumonias and uh, they can have uh, infection of the sinuses. So they can have sinusitis, sinuses, okay. Okay, now, yes, Sri Devi, I'll show the slides, okay. And then they are at increased risk of developing autoimmune diseases like celiac disease, then increased risk of atopy, of atopy, allergies. So they get these localized allergies like bronchial asthma, localized allergies like bronchial asthma. So they can have allergies like asthma. Third, anaphylaxis to, third is anaphylaxis to IgA containing products. Hello. So third is anaphylaxis to IgA containing products, anaphylaxis. So they can develop an anaphylactic reaction to IgA containing products. So, you know, they are deficient in IgA antibody, but say if they are, if, if they are given a blood transfusion, which contains, you know, normal blood, if they are given a normal, normal, if they require a blood transfusion and if they are given normal mashed blood, normal blood is going to contain IgA antibody. You know that IgA antibody can act as a foreign protein and cause anaphylactic shock in these people. 
who have IgA deficiency. So therefore, if they require a blood transfusion, they should always be given IgA deficient blood. They need to be given IgA deficient blood. So anaphylaxis to IgA containing product. So they have anaphylaxis to IgA containing product. So this is selective IgA deficiency, selective IgA deficiency. Okay. So now let me just show you, Sri Devi, what part do you want me to show again? So I have covered three entities here in B cell disorders. Okay, in B cell disorders, first is Bruton's A gamma globulinemia, which is excellent recessive due to mutation in BTK gene. BTK full form is B cell tyrosine kinase. So problem is pro and pre B cells fail to get converted to mature B cells. So in the blood, there are no mature B cells. There are no plasma cells. There are no antibodies. No antibody means A gamma globulinemia. Male child develops recurrent bacterial and enteroviral infections after six months of birth. In the peripheral smear, there are no B cells. In the blood, there are no uh, antibodies. Then if you see the uh, follicles in the secondary lymphoid organs, the B cells are not there. There are no plasma cells. No plasma cells also. They are at increased risk of autoimmune disease. Replacement with intravenous immunoglobulins or hematopoietic stem cell transplantation. Second is common variable immunodeficiency, that is CVID, which is a heterogeneous group. Many, many causes can be inherited or acquired. Both inher can be inherited or acquired. Here the problem is pro and pre B cells are okay. Mature B cells are also there. But mature B cells fail to get converted to plasma cells. So B cells are there, but no plasma cells, no antibodies. So in the peripheral smear, normal number of B cells. In the lymph node and bone marrow also, B cells are there. But plasma cells are decreased and there are antibodies are decreased. So 20 to 30 year of age group, increased risk of autoimmune diseases, bronchiectasis, lymphomas and sinopulmonary infections. Then most common primary immunodeficiency disease is selective IgA deficiency. Cause is not known. Only IgA antibody is reduced. All the other antibodies are normal. Most patients are asymptomatic and if they have infections, you know, IgA antibody are secreted in the respiratory tract and GI tract and they provide protection there. So now they have airway infections like recurrent sinopulmonary infections and GIT. They have diarrhea due to GRDA. Increased risk of autoimmune diseases like celiac, increased risk of atopy and anaphylaxis to IgA containing products. Okay, now let us come to T-cell disorders. T-cell disorders. Let us come to T-cell disorders. Okay, in T-cell disorders, number one. So here there is only T-cell deficiency. So here we have uh, disorders, number one, Dijorge, thymic aplasia, that is Dijorge syndrome. So first we have Dijorge syndrome. So in T-cell disorders, First is Dijorge syndrome, which is also called thymic aplasia or Dijorge syndrome. Okay, what is Dijorge syndrome? Okay, Sri Devi, yes. Uh, I hope all of you are able to write down now. Adesh and um, uh, Akanksha, everyone. Okay, so Dijorge syndrome, thymic aplasia. Okay, Dijorge syndrome is also called 22Q11 deletion syndrome. So Dijorge syndrome, what is it called? It's also called 22Q11 deletion syndrome. So chromosome 22, Q means long arm, 11 is the region. So genes on chromosome 22 long arm, region 11 are deleted. So from the region 11 on the long arm of chromosome 22, some genes are deleted. What are these genes deleted from? Okay, so what when these when they, what are these genes responsible for? So if the, this genes are deleted you know normally these genes in this part of chromosome 22 they are responsible for forming the third and fourth pharyngeal pouches okay so now as a result there is failure to develop failure to develop third and fourth fourth pharyngeal pouches pharyngeal pouches so there is failure to develop third and fourth so third and fourth pharyngeal pouches are not formed and you know third and fourth pharyngeal pouches what all do they normally produce 
third and fourth pharyngeal pouches they produce so as a result now third and fourth pharyngeal pouches number one they produce parathyroids parathyroids two the, they produce parathyroids two they produce thymus thymus then you know they are also responsible for producing uh, what you call uh, some parts of heart and great vessels they are also responsible for producing parts of uh, great vessels great vessels and heart and heart so third and fourth pharyngeal pouches produce this then there is something called c cells in thyroid they also produce them okay so that is okay but they are mainly responsible for these so as a result now when there is failure to develop third and fourth pharyngeal pouches so there are no parathyroids so no parathyroids no parathyroids that means you know parathyroids produce a hormone called parathormone and you know parathormone regulates calcium metabolism parathormone regulates calcium metabolism so when there are no parathyroids no parathyroids means decreased pth decreased pth that means decreased calcium decreased blood calcium level so now this is called hypocalcemia so there is hypocalcemia and hypocalcemia leads to tetany so there is hypocalcemia which leads to tetany so hypocalcemia leading to tetany second now no thymus no thymus so when there is no thymus then what happens when there is no thymus is not there you know thymus is very important because t cells have to mature in the thymus so as a result t cells do not mature so this leads to t cell deficiency t cell deficiency so you know you already know t cells are responsible for cell mediated immunity so cell mediated immunity is missing so cell mediated immunity is missing so so no t cell deficiency now because they have t cell deficiency so they have decreased they have deficient cell mediated immunity so deficient cell mediated immunity as a result of deficient cell mediated immunity they have recurrent viral and fungal infections so you know t cells the cell mediated immunity protects us from viral and fungal infections so now they have recurrent viral and fungal infections fungal infections so cell mediated immune response protects us from viral infections and from fungal infections so they have recurrent viral and fungal infections and third is great vessels and heart are not formed properly as a result they have conotruncal abnormality something called as they have what you call as conotruncal conotruncal abnormalities they have conotruncal abnormalities like tetralogy of fallow example so example they have tetralogy of fallow so they have tetralogy of fallow and truncus arteriosus truncus arteriosus so they have tetralogy of fallow and truncus arteriosus they have tetralogy of fallow and truncus arteriosus okay now if you do lab tests lab lab test you already know number 1 decreased t cells so there is this is t cell in, so there is t cell deficiency so decrease t cells number 2 decrease parathormone pth 3 decrease calcium calcium that is hypocalcemia which is going to produce tetany hypocalcemia which is going to produce tetany fourth do an x ray do an x ray you know um, uh, they don't have a thymus so absent thymic shadow absent thymic shadow so they don't have x uh, they don't have thymus so do an x ray of this region chest absent thymic shadow and last 22q11 deletion can be detected detected by a technique called fish fish stands for fluorescent in situ hybridization so by fish technique you can detect this abnormality you can detect 22q11 deletion detected by fish and treatment is they are you know 
you have to protect them from T cell immunodeficiency. So transplantation of thymic tissue. Transplantation of yes, Adesh cleft lip also. Transplantation of thymic tissue okay now since you have pointed out Adesh I'll tell you they can have cleft lip and cleft palate also and facial abnormalities you know actually there are two 22q11 deletion syndromes one is Diageorge where you have t-cell immunodeficiency predominantly with the hypocalcemia and tetany what I have just described and second is velocardiofacial syndrome in velocardiofacial syndrome you have cleft lip cleft palate so you have cleft lip, cleft palate plus facial abnormalities. That's called VELO, velocardiofacial. So cleft, will, cleft lip, cleft palate, facial abnormalities and cardiac abnormalities, they are more prominent there. So, so let me write down. So in 22Q11 deletion, actually we have two syndromes. We have Digeorge, which I have just described above. And second is velocardiofacial. Cardiofacial syndrome. In velocardiofacial, you have cardiac abnormalities, you have cleft lip, cleft palate is there. So, velocardiofacial. So, in diagnosis, hypocalcemia, tetany, abscess of thymus, they are more prominent along with cardiac and great vessel abnormalities. In velocardiofacial, the facial abnormalities are more prominent. Okay. So, that is the first disease of T cell immunodeficiency that is diagnosis syndrome. Okay, second disease. Second disease is interleukin-12 receptor deficiency. Second is IL-12 receptor deficiency. Deficiency. Okay, now first I'll tell you, you already know about IL-12, interleukin-12. Okay, now if you remember your cytokines, I told you who produces interleukin-12. This is IL-12 receptor. Okay, now who produces IL-12? IL-12 is... It is produced by macrophages. So, IL, what is IL-12? IL-12 is a cytokine produced by, produced by macrophages. So, macrophage will produce this. Okay. And you know this IL-12, it is produced by macrophages. It acts on T cells. IL-12 acts on T cells, T helper cells on T cells. So CD4 T cells, it acts on T cells. So who has IL-12 receptors? So IL-12 acts on T cells via IL-12 receptors on T cells, on T cells. So where, who produces IL-12? Macrophages produce IL-12. Where will IL-12 go and act? It will act on the T cells. T cells have receptor for IL-12. So this is a macrophage here. This is a macrophage. So this is a macrophage. Macrophage will produce IL-12 and this IL-12 now will act on the T cell. So this is a T lymphocyte here. This is a T cell. T cell has these IL-12 receptors. receptors. So on this receptor now IL-12 will come and attach. And now this T cell, once this IL-12 attaches to this T cell, receptor on the T cell, now this T cell will differentiate into T helper 1 cell. So now the T cell differentiates into T helper 1 cell. And you know uh, 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 T helper 1 cells and these, if you remember which is the major cytokine produced by T helper 1 cells, T helper 1 cells produce interferon gamma. They now produce interferon gamma. They now produce interferon gamma. So T helper 1 cells produce interferon gamma. Gamma. And you know what is the function main? What are the functions of interferon gamma? Again, if you turn your pages and see interferon gamma, if you look at interferon gamma, what are the functions of T helper 1 cells produce interferon gamma? And interferon gamma now uh, it activates the macrophages. So, what does this interferon gamma do? Number one, it activates macrophages, macrophages to kill the ingested microbes ingested microbes so it activates macrophages to kill the ingested microbes second is it also activates cytotoxic t cells that is cd8 t cells 
or cytotoxic T cells, yes, interferon gamma. And third, if you remember, interferon gamma also stimulates B cells to produce to produce IgG antibody, IgG opsonizing IgG antibody. Opsonizing IgG antibody. This is a function of IL12. So if you remember this much, so macrophages produce IL12. IL12 will tell the live T cells or will tell the CD4 T cells to differentiate into T helper 1 subset. And T helper 1 subset, the major cytokine produces interferon gamma. You know the actions of interferon gamma, it activates macrophages to kill the microbes, activates CD8 T cells. Stimulate B cells to produce IgG antibody. Okay, now let us come to this disease, IL-12 receptor deficiency. So now, what is IL-12 receptor? Where do you find IL-12 receptor? It's on the T cell. So now, if T cell is not having this IL-12 receptor, IL-12 cannot act on the T cells. Therefore, T helper 1 cells will not be formed. Therefore, interferon gamma will not be there. And very important function of interferon gamma is to activate the macrophages to kill the microbes like the TB bacilli. You know macrophages play a very important role in chronic inflammation. They form a granuloma to kill TB bacilli. So now th that will not happen. So let us come to IL-12 receptor deficiency. So second entity in T cell category is IL-12 receptor deficiency. So in interleukin-12 receptor deficiency, what do you have? Now what will you see? There will be decreased T helper 1 response. So why decreased T helper 1? Because IL-12 receptor is not there on the T cells. So absent IL-12 Yes, absolutely correct, Adesh. Opsonizing IgG, classical macrophages. Abs absolutely correct. So, absent IL-12, receptor on T cells. On T cells. So, as a result, T helper 1 cells are not formed. So, decreased T helper 1 cell response. As a result, decreased interferon gamma. So, interferon, decreased interferon gamma. IL-12 receptor deficiency is inherited. It is autosomal recessive. It's an autosomal recessive disorder. So what is the inheritance? Autosomal recessive disorder. And clinical features, what do these people have? So since they don't have interferon gamma because they don't have T helper 1 cells, so they have disseminated, they have severe, they have disseminated mycobacterial and fungal infections because to fight with fungal and microbacterial infect, mycobacterial tuberculosis infection, we need these T helper 1 cells. We need their interferon gamma. So they have disseminated, disseminated mycobacterial, mycobacterial and fungal infections. Disseminated mycobacterial and fungal infections. So they have disseminated mycobacterial and fungal infections. One, and you know, you know, they may present uh, with tuberculosis when they are given BCG. So may may present after administration may may present with TB after administration after administration of BCG vaccine. So you give them BCG vaccine and they will come with tuberculosis. So this is IL-12 receptor deficiency. So this is the second disease in the T-cell category. Come to the third entity in the T-cell category. This is the second disease in the T-cell category. Third entity. Third entity is called autosomal dominant hyper IgE syndrome. Third entity is autosomal dominant. Autosomal dominant. Third entity is autosomal dominant hyper IgE syndrome, IgE syndrome, which is also called Job syndrome, which is also called Job syndrome, which is also called Job syndrome. So autosomal dominant hyper IgE syndrome or Job syndrome. Okay, now in this entity, what is deficient? Here there is deficiency of, you know, helper T cells are of three types. T helper 1, T helper 2, T helper 17. So now here there is deficiency of 
so this is an inherited disorder autosomal dominant hyper ige means they have excess of ige antibody it's also called job job syndrome here there is deficiency of t helper 17 cells t helper 17 cells due to mutation in stat3 s t a t stat3 so stat3 so due to mutation in stat3 you know uh, stat3 gene actually stat3 gene you know uh, it regulates the production of t helper 17 cells so because stat3 is mutated there is deficiency of t helper 17 due to mutation in stat3 gene as a result now what you know what is go back and think what is the function of t helper <coughs> 17 t helper 17 cells if you remember they t helper 17 subset which are the cytokines that it produces? It produces, uh, T helper 17 produces IL-17, IL-22 and chemokines. So normal, normal T helper 17, so let me write down there. If you remember from your past knowledge, normal T helper 17 subset, it produces cytokine produced. Go to your notes, cytokines that it produces are IL-17, IL-22 and chemokines. Chemokines, okay? and chemokines and what is the function of this T helper 17 subset all these cytokines you know they recruit recruit neutrophils and monocytes so what do these these do I, all these cytokines produced by T helper 17 what do they do they recruit neutrophils and monocytes and thus by recruiting neutrophils and monocytes they provide defense against so function is recruit neutrophils and monocytes which provide which provide defense against so which provide defense against uh, which provide uh, which protect us from or provide defense against extracellular bacteria and fungi extracellular bacteria and fungi extracellular bacteria and fungi this is the normal function of t helper 17 so t helper 17 subset produces il 17 22 and chemokines these three cytokines produced by t helper 17 subset recruits neutrophils and monocytes and these neutrophils and monocytes will protect us against the extra extracellular bacteria and fungi now when t helper 17 is not there these cytokines are not there as a result this function of providing defense against extracellular bacteria and fungi are also not there so as a result now there is so so there is deficiency of t helper 17 as a result of deficiency of t helper 17 so now there is no il 17 no il 22 no chemokines chemokines because t helper 17 is not there as a result now there is impaired so there is impaired recruitment impaired recruitment of neutrophils and monocytes monocytes so there is impaired recruitment of neutrophils and monocytes to the site of infection site of infection so neutrophils and monocytes will not come to the site of infection to kill extracellular bacteria and fungi so impaired neutrophils and to the extracellular okay and another thing is they have increased ige levels increased ige levels so they have so the name of the syndrome is autosomal dominant hyper ige syndrome so they have increased ige antibody e levels okay now this is an inherited syndrome there are some more features so remember the abbreviation fated f a t e so now what are the other features of this syndrome? Number one, coarse faces. They have coarse faces. F-A-C-I-E-S. So F stands for F is coarse faces. Two, they have cold staphylococcus abscess. Cold staphylococcus abscesses. So they have abscesses. F is faces, coarse faces. A is Abscesses, cold staphylococcal abscesses, T stands for teeth. T stands for teeth. So what do they have? They have retained primary teeth. Retained primary teeth. So T stands for teeth here. Retained 
So F is for faces, A is for abscess, T is for retained primary teeth, then E is for IgE, increased IgE antibody. So E stands for IgE and D stands for dermatological problems like eczema. Dermatologic problems like eczema. Like they have eczema. Dermatological problems like eczema. So coarse faces, coarse staphylococcus abscess, primary retained teeth, increase IgE, dermatologic problems like eczema. So they have all these features. Okay. So this is autosomal dominant hyper IgE syndrome, also called as job syndrome. And last is last in T cell category, last disorder of T cell. So this was third. Fourth disorder of T cell category is called chronic mucocutaneous candidiasis. Chronic mucocutaneous candidiasis chronic mucocutaneous candidiasis chronic mucocutaneous candidiasis here again there is T cell dysfunction now here you know uh, they have there are many causes many causes many causes for this and uh, 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 there is T cell dysfunction the T cells you know they don't proliferate in response to candida antigens in vitro. So basically what do they have? They have T cell dysfunction. Many causes are there for this and they have because of this T cell dysfunction, you know, they have non-invasive, they have candida infection of skin and mucous membrane. So they have non-invasive, this produces non-invasive. So they have non-invasive candida albicans infection, albicans infection. So they have non-invasive candida albicans infection of skin and mucous membrane. Mucous membrane. So they have non-invasive candida albicans infection of skin and mucous membrane. And if you look at the lab tests, you know, lab, uh, there is, uh, uh, if, you, if you take out their T cells, there is absent in vitro, in vitro means in the test tube outside the body. There's absent in vitro T cell proliferation. So absent in vitro T cell proliferation in response to candida antigen. In response to candida antigen. So they have absent in vitro T cell proliferation in response to candida antigen. Okay, so this is T, this, this covers the T cell for T cell immunodeficiency disorders. Okay, last now I come to combined B and T cell immunodeficiency disorder. So last is combined, last category combined B and T cell immunodeficiency disorders. Combined B and T cell immunodeficiency disorders. Here again I have four. I, I, I will talk about four diseases. Okay, so combined B and T cell immunodeficiency disorder. Okay, first now is very severe. Severe combined immunodeficiency. So you have severe, first is severe combined immunodeficiency. SCID, which we refer to as SCID. This disorder is referred to as SCID, SCID. Severe combined immunodeficiency or SCID. SCID is of, so as you know, in SCID, there is B cell as well as there is severe B and T cell immunodeficiency. Okay, so severe B and T cell immunodeficiency. Okay, now causes. Causes is there are many types of SCID. So there are many types. Many types are there. I will tell you the three important types. Okay, there are many types of SCID. First is, there are many types of SCID. Most common type of SCID is Uh, uh, mutation in first type, so many types, most common is mutations, SCID is due to mutations in gamma chain subunit, mutation in gamma chain subunit of cytokine receptor, cytokine receptor. Cytokine mutations in gamma chain subunit of cytokine receptor. This is the um, uh, this is the X-linked type of skid. This is X-linked recessive. So this is X-linked recessive. Okay, now you know what do I mean by this? 
cytokine receptors you know we, we have read so many cytokines yes uh, we have read so many types of cytokines when cytokines act on the cells the cells have cytokine receptors on which the cytokines are going to act like i just showed you macrophages produce il12 il12 act on the t cells via il12 receptor so what is il12 receptor that's a cytokine receptor so in in this first type of skid which is x linked recessive the cytokine receptor is defective the cytokine receptors on the cells on the t cells on the various cells all cells have cytokine receptors on which the cytokines are going to act so the receptor is defective you know the receptor is composed of gamma chains so gamma chains are defective so mutation in the gamma chain subunit of cytokine receptor especially especially uh, il2r il2r il2 means receptor for il2 you know il2 is a very important cytokine which is needed for proliferation of um, so if you remember just turn pages and see look at il2 what is the function of il2 il2 is a very important cytokine which is needed for the growth of all the helper t cells growth of cytotoxic t cells growth of regulatory t cells growth of natural killer cells so all the t lymphocytes helper t cells cytotoxic t cells regulatory t cells natural killer cells all the t cells if they have to grow and proliferate you require il2 il2 acts on these cells via il2 receptor so if il2 receptor is abnormal if it is mutated if the gamma chain subunit of the receptor is mutated il2 cannot act on any of the lymphocytes and lymphocytes will not so if lymphocytes do not multiply immunity will not be there so the most common especially il2 receptor so as a result this is an excellent recessive type this is excellent recessive type of skid second type of skid is ada deficiency adenosine deaminase deficiency deaminase deficiency adeno second type is adenosine deaminase deficiency or ada deficiency ada deficiency this is autosomal recessive this is autosomal recessive you know adenosine deaminase is an enzyme uh, it's an enzyme found in the lymphocyte and you know uh, if this enzyme is not there deoxyadenosine will accumulate in the lymphocytes and will kill them it's toxic to the lymphocytes so if ada enzyme is not there deoxy so what will happen deficiency of ada so if there is ada deficiency deoxy adenosine adenosine accumulates in the lymphocytes in lymphocytes or in the lympho lymphoid cells in the bone marrow in the lymphoid cells and it kills them and kills them kills them so the lymphoid cells are thus killed so that is ada deficiency third is third type is due to jack3 deficiency jack3 third type is jack3 deficiency which is again autosomal recessive which is also autosomal recessive okay so now clinical features so these are three types of skid what are the clinical features now you know right from the birth within 3 years of life the child will present the newborn will have the disease so what will you see there is failure to thrive failure to thrive number 1 failure to thrive so they don't have b cells they don't have t cells they do not have natural killer cells so number 1 you know the child right from birth will go on having all types of infections so there is failure to thrive to chronic diarrhea chronic diarrhea so chronic diarrhea three thrush what is thrush thrush is candida infection thrush then they have all types of infections they have recurrent viral bacterial fungal all types viral bacterial fungal and protozoal infections so they have all infections recurrent viral bacterial fungal and protozoal infection so they have all these infections okay if you do labs look at the labs 
do an x-ray no thymus again so absent thymic shadow thymic shadow so no t cells so thymus also won't develop absent thymic shadow then look at the lymphoid organs no b cells so the lymphoid the uh, if you look at the lymphoid organs all the lymphoid organs the gen the follicles will all be atrophied atrophied follicles you know b cells are in the follicles t cells mature in the thymus no t cells thymus atrophies so absent thymic shadow second atrophy atrophy of lymphoid follicles lymphoid follicles in lymph node spleen etc so the lymphoid follicles also undergo atrophy because there are no b cells okay then third look at the peripheral blood no b cell no t cell so lymphocyte count is decrease decrease lymphocyte count so there are no lymphocytes decrease lymphocyte count so in the peripheral blood lymphocyte count is decrease De do a flow cytometry flow cytometry in flow cytometry you will have both decrease b and t cells so decrease lymphocytes do a flow cytometry again you will find decrease lymphocytes so decrease lymphocyte okay treatment what is the treatment okay treatment is you have to do the child will die within one year if you don't do a hematopoietic stem cell transplantation so you know they do not have any immunity at all so you have to do a hematopoietic stem cell transplantation without which death will occur within first year of life without which without which death within first year of life so death within first year of life second is you know the gene therapy gene therapy gene therapy for ada deficiency adenosine demyelinating deficiency you know ada deficiency was the first disease in the history for which gene therapy was given so gene therapy for ada deficiency gene therapy for ada deficiency so this is the first combined b and t cell immunodeficiency disease called as uh, skid or severe combined immunodeficiency coming to the second disease in combined b and t cell deficiency second disease is ataxia telangiectasia ataxia telangiectasia so second disease is ataxia telangiectasia which is an autosomal a4 ataxia a4 autosomal autosomal recessive recessive disorder autosomal recessive disorder due to due to mutation in atm gene atm gene atm stands for ataxia telangiectasia mutated gene atm gene due to mutation in atm gene okay now you know atm gene is a dna repair gene so now if there is mutation in atm gene atm gene is mutated so there is failure to repair double stranded dna breaks there is failure to repair double stranded stranded dna breaks so there is failure to repair double stranded dna breaks so as a result the double stranded dna breaks are not there and the cells start uh, dying so the cell there is cell death cell cycle arrest and cell death so death also there is as a result so there is cell cycle arrest and cell death cell death which cells are going to die which cells are going to be deficient so there is deficiency of b and t cells so there is deficiency of b and t cells okay so now clinical features what do they have it's called ataxia telangiectasia so number one they have cerebellar ataxia cerebellar ataxia so ataxia second point is telangiectasia telangiectasia so what do they have telangiectasia means abnormal dilatation of blood vessels so they have spider angiomas spider angiomas what are these spider angiomas they are basically telangiectasias 
tilangiectasia. So tilangiectasia means abnormal dilatation of the small blood vessels. Third feature, they have deficiency of IgA antibody. Deficiency of IgA antibody. Other antibodies, so they have deficiency of IgA as well as others also. So if you do their lab tests, number one, decreased IgA. Very important is IgA. Other than that, even IgG and IgE are deficient. One. Two, decreased lymphocytes in the blood. Peripheral smear, there is decreased lymphocytes. What is decreased lymphocytes called? Lymphopenia. Lymphopenia. Three. There is cerebellar atrophy. Cerebellar atrophy. So because their cerebellum is atrophied, they have that cerebellar ataxia. They have ataxia. And fourth is increased AFP levels. What is AFP? Alpha fetoprotein. So yes, it's a triad of, absolutely right, Shri Devi, triad of cerebellar ataxia, spider angiomas and IgA deficiency. It's a triad. Okay, and alpha fetoprotein, levels are raised. You know, their liver is not fully developed. That is why they have high alpha fetoprotein levels. Alpha fetoprotein is actually produced by fetal liver. So, you know, uh, you know, in, fet in a fetus, the liver is not fully developed. So, they keep producing alpha fetoprotein. Once the liver becomes fully developed, alpha fetoprotein production stops. But in children with ataxia telangiectasia, liver is not fully developed. It's like fetal liver. So, it keeps producing alpha fetoprotein. So they have increased AFP alpha fetoprotein levels. Okay. So this is second entity in this category that is ataxia telangiectasia. Third combined B and T cell immunodeficiency is hyper IgM syndrome. IgM syndrome. Hyper IgM syndrome. Okay. Now you already know I in the last class I told you something about isotype switching or class switching. You know, I told you what is isotype switching or class switching. B lymphocytes take the help of T cells. They stop. Normally B cell, if it sees an antigen, the first antibody that it is going to produce is IgM antibody. And B cell produces this IgM antibody without taking any help of helper T cell. So on its own, it sees an antigen, uses its own brain, starts manufacturing IgM antibody very quickly to fight that infection. Then after some time, B lymphocyte goes and attaches to the T cell and then the T lymphocyte with the help of T cell, it stops producing IgM and switches over to production of IgG, IgA and IgE. Because these antibodies are, are more specific, they can fight the antigen better. So they start producing IgG, IgA and IgE and stop the production of IgM. This is called isotype or class switching. So for isotype of class switching to happen, B cells should physically attach to the T cells. How do the B cells attach to the T cells? I already told you CD40 on the B cells attaches to CD40 ligand on the T cells. CD40. So let us look at isotype, isotype of class switching. So then we will come to hyper IgM. So what is this isotype of class switching? That is, stop producing M, switch over to production of G, A and E. Okay, so for class switching, what do you want? This is the T cell and this is the B cell. So, what do you want? Very important is, is CD40 on B cells should fit into CD40 ligand on T cells. Then class switching will happen. Then, you know, this B cell will say, I won't produce any M anymore. Now I am going to produce G, A and E. And G, A and E. Okay, now what is hyper IgM syndrome? In hyper IgM syndrome, you know, this, this, there is failure of isotype switching. This does not happen. So what will happen? Whenever antigen will come, B cells will go on producing IgM antibody, which they produce on their own without the help of T cell. They won't produce G, A and E, G and E because isotype switching is not happening. Isotype switching is not happening. Why is isotype switching not happening? This either the CD40 on the T cell is not there or the CD40 on the B cell is not there. 
So either one of them is missing. So B and T cell can't attach. Therefore, isotypo class switching cannot happen. So B cell is going on and on manufacturing IgM antibody, no manufacturing of GAO. Okay, so what is a hyper IgM syndrome? Hyper IgM syndrome is basically failure of isotype switching. Isotype switching. So there is basically failure of isotype switching due to why? Due to number one, it can be due to mutation in CD40 ligand on T cells. T cells, this is more common more common. So mutation in CD40 ligand on T cell, this is more common and it is X-linked recessive. So second is mutation in CD40 on B cells. Mutation in CD40 on B cells, this is autosomal recessive. This variety is autosomal recessive. So what is more common? More common is the X-linked recessive that is mutation in CD40 ligand on the T cells. So as a result, now if you look at the labs, what will you see? Increased IgM, normal or increased IgM and decreased IgG, IgA, IgE. All these three are decreased. Are these three are decreased because of, because isotype switching is not happening. Okay, clinical features, what do they have? You know, these IgG, A and E. IgG antibodies are opsonizing and complement fixing. IgA antibodies are present in the respiratory and GI tract secretions and protect us there. IgE antibodies, you know, they protect us from the proto, from these uh, parasitic infections. So now they have, and you know, these opsonizing IgG antibodies and complement fixing IgG antibodies, they protect us from pyogenic infections. So now these people have severe pyogenic infections early in life. Severe pyogenic infections early in life, early in life, severe pyogenic infections early in life. Second, opportunistic infections with pneumocystis, opportunistic infections with pneumocystis, pneumocystis. Three, they also have pneumocyst opportunistic infections with CMV, pneumocystis and cryptosporidium. Cryptosporidium. So all these opportunistic infections are due to decrease opsonizing IgG antibodies. So all these infections, you know, all these are because of decreased opsonizing IgG antibodies. So decreased opsonizing IgG antibodies. So this is the third entity in this category that is hyper IgM syndrome. Coming to the last, last disease in combined B and T cell category that is Viscott Eldridge. Viscott Eldridge syndrome. Viscott Eldridge syndrome. Viscott Eldridge syndrome. Okay. Now Viscott Eldridge syndrome is an again excellent recessive. X-linked recessive disorder due to mutation in VASP gene. VASP gene. VASP stands for Viscott Eldridge syndrome protein. So VASP stands for Viscott Eldridge syndrome protein. Syndrome and P stands for protein. So this is due to mutation in VASP gene. Now when VASP gene gets mutated, <coughs> what happens? T cells are unable to recognize the actin cytoskeleton. So T cells are unable to recognize actin cytoskeleton. So T cells are unable to recognize their actin cytoskeleton. Sets. As a result, T cell signaling becomes defective. So this leads to defective T cell signaling. Defective T cell signaling. So again, if the T cell signaling is defective, you know, again, uh, 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 T cells won't be, T cells will become 
even though T cells are there, they won't be able to function properly and indirectly, you know, some B cell functions will also become abnormal, will also become abnormal. So clinical features now, what do they have? It's a triad. So it's a triad of, Viscott Eldridge is a triad of number one, recurrent infections. They have recurrent infections, bacterial, fungal and viral. Recurrent infections, bacterial, fungal and viral. So they have recurrent infections, bacterial, fungal and viral. Second, they have thrombocytopenia. Thrombocytopenia. Plus one more feature, remember microplatelets, very tiny platelets. So they have thrombocytopenia, recurrent infections plus microplatelets, that is very tiny platelets. And third, skin, that is eczema. Skin disease that is eczema. Also increased risk of autoimmune diseases. Of autoimmune diseases. Okay, lab tests, labs, if we look at their labs. Number one, decreased and in antibodies, decreased IgG. Decreased, so they have decreased or oh, what you call as Decreased or normal, decreased or normal IgG and IgM. So IgG or IgM, they may be decreased or normal, increased IgE and IgA. So A and E are increased and G and M are decreased or normal. And they have thrombocytopenia with microplatelets, very tiny. Platelets. So they have thrombocytopenia with microplatelets. So they have thrombocytopenia with microplatelets. Okay, so this is about uh, immunodeficiency diseases. So I hope immunodeficiency diseases are uh, clear to all of you, immunodeficiency diseases. Now last part of this chapter is transplant pathology. So I come to transplant pathology. So last part now is, so I hope everyone this is, this part is clear. So last part now is of this chapter is transplant pathology. Transplant pathology. In transplant pathology, we have, I will be covering two entities that is transplant rejection, transplant rejection, and second is GVHD. GVHD. GVHD stands for graft versus host disease. Okay. So I'll tell you the meaning of both these. So first is transplant rejection. Transplant rejection. Okay, transplant rejection. So, okay. So, what is this transplant rejection? For example, say this is a recipient. This is a recipient and he wants a kidney transplant. He wants a kidney transplant. So, this is a kidney. This is the donor kidney. Donor kidney. Okay. So, now this kidney is going to come into the recipient. Now, this recipient is immunocompetent. Immuno competent. Immunocompetent means his immune system is perfect. His B cells are perfectly healthy, capable of producing antibodies. His T cells are perfectly healthy, capable of producing cell-mediated immune response. So when this donor kidney comes here, the if the recipient likes it, if his immune system accepts it, fine, the transplant will be accepted. Otherwise, if his immune system, his antibodies or his T cells react to this donor kidney, they can reject. So they can reject. So, so basically is the recipient is immunocompetent. His, his immune system is competent. He may, he may accept the graft or he may reject the graft. Now if you look at the rejection. So transplant rejection is of three types. Three types. So if he rejects it, it is of three types. So transplant rejection is of three types. First is hyperacute rejection. Hyperacute 
rejection hyper acute rejection okay what is hyper acute rejection so this is the recipient this is the recipient this is the kidney as soon as you put this kidney you are, you are operating and you have just anastomosed the kidney in the recipient the kidney has been anastomosed and immediately the kidney is rejected how do you know it's rejected as soon as you as soon as you put this kidney here by surgery what happens this donor kidney becomes blue in color it becomes blue it becomes flaccid and it doesn't filter any urine at all so you come to know it is rejected so within minutes it, it is rejected within happens within minutes within minutes recipient says no i don't like you why because this recipient is already having antibodies against this donor kidney so why because the recipient is already recipient in his blood is already having preformed antibodies against the donor kidney these antibodies as soon as the anastomosis is done surgery is done these antibodies will run here into the recipients into the donor kidney and they will start damaging the donor kidney the blood vessels the endothelium of the donor kidney and the donor kidney will be rejected so what is the cause the cause is these already existing antibodies these are called preformed antibodies in the recipient so these antibodies run to the donor kidney and start thrashing the donor kidney and they the kidney is immediately rejected on the operation table itself this is called hyperacute rejection so hyperacute rejection number 1 it happens within minutes within minutes so it happens within minutes what is the cause or what is the pathogenesis pathogenesis is the recipient has pre existing antibodies so pre existing antibodies antibodies pre existing antibodies pre existing antibodies pre existing antibodies in the recipient which react with the which pre existing antibodies in the antigen in the pre in the recipient which uh, which react to donor antigens donor antigens so they react to the donor antigens in the donor kidney so now what is this so pre the recipient is having pre formed or pre existing antibodies so pre formed or pre existing antibodies in the recipient so recipient is having them which are reacting to the donor antigens in the kidney in the donated kidney so what is what type of reaction so these antibodies are going and they are attaching to the blood vessels in the recipient uh, in the donor kidney so this is the donor kidney so these antibodies are going and attaching to the endothelium to the antigens on the endothelium in the donor kidney and they are thrashing the donor kidney so this is a type 2 hypersensitivity reaction so what is type 2 antibodies attaching to the fixed antigens so where are the antigens the antigens are in the donor kidney they are fixed in the donor kidney antibodies from the recipient's blood are traveling to the donor kidney attaching to the fixed antigen on the endothelium of the donor kidney and then thrashing the donor kidney by activating complement so it's a type 2 hypersensitivity reaction so microscopically what will you see in this donor kidney there will be widespread thrombosis so what do you see yes absolutely correct you see widespread thrombosis thrombosis in vessels of donor kidney vessels of donor kidney so in the blood vessels of donor kidney there is widespread thrombosis and what will thrombosis lead to thrombosis will lead to ischemia and necrosis of the kidney that you have so the whole kidney will undergo necrosis that is why you know it becomes blue and useless so it is blue. so graft has to be removed so graft graft has to be remove so now you will have to remove this kidney it's become useless no point it is not going to do any work so the graft has to be reduced this is called as hyperacute rejection which occurs within minutes and this is due to uh, what you call as pre existing recipient antibodies pre existing recipient antibodies okay so this is what you call hyperacute rejection 
Okay, now it is due to what is it due to? It is due to pre-existing recipient antibodies, pre-existing or pre-formed. So now, who are these recipients who have these pre-existing antibodies? So these pre-formed or pre-existing antibodies, they are found in. So who are the recipients who have them? So they are. Okay, uh, okay. So uh, everyone, it is fine now. Let us continue. No, so no break now. Already I have given break. You had a big break. Okay. So now. Okay. So you had a big break. So let's see now. We finished hyperacute rejection. So hyperacute rejection, as I told you, it happens within minutes, and it is due to pre-existing antibodies in the recipient which react to donor antigens. Okay. And this is a type two hypersensitivity reaction. There is widespread thrombosis in the. Vessels of the donor kidney thrombosis leads to ischemia, necrosis. The kidney dies, and the graft has to be removed. Graft has to be removed. Okay. Second, I was what I was telling you is pre-existing antibodies. Now, who are the recipients who have pre-existing antibodies? So now, pre-existing antibodies, pre-existing or pre-formed antibodies. so pre existing antibodies they are seen in so pre existing antibodies are seen in who are the people who have pre existing antibodies and if they get a graft those antibodies are going to react with that graft antigen are number 1 multiparous women multiparous women okay now you know multiparous women they have lot of antibodies against mhc antigens different because they have had multiparous women have had number of children so they are exposed they have been exposed to a number of paternal antigens through the fetuses so they have formed antibodies against numerous mhc antigens so some of those antibodies can also react if they tomorrow get a transplant and a, they can also react against that second is a person who has received multiple blood transfusion so multi transfused multi transfused recipients so if the recipient has if the recipient has received multiple blood transfusions in the past then you know uh, they they will also uh, they will those who have received okay so multi multi transfuse recipients or those who have received multiple transfusions in the past then if you have you know uh, if you receive multiple transfusions the uh, you received uh, in multiple blood transfusion you are getting wbcs also wbcs are very rich in mhc or hla antigens so they they, they develop so getting transfusions from different people you will develop antibodies to different hla antigens which will and if this person later on in life needs a graft those antibodies against hla antigen will react with the graft and three is in people who have history of transplant in the past transplant rejection in the past so that means history of transplant rejection is there that means they've had a transplant before also okay so this is hyperacute rejection okay second is acute rejection acute graft rejection so second is acute graft rejection okay acute graft rejection it happens in happens in weeks to months in weeks to months so this happens from weeks to so time period is it happens from weeks to months okay so now this acute graft rejection is of two types it is of it happens in weeks to months and it is of two types so it is of two types it is it can be acute cellular rejection acute cellular rejection it can be of two types acute cellular rejection which is a type 4 hypersensitivity reaction type 4 hypersensitivity reaction and here cd4 and cd8 t cells so donor donor cd4 uh, sorry here so it is a type 4 hypersensitivity reaction where recipients cd4 and cd8 t cells so recipient cd4 and cd8 t cell
So it is the CD4 and CD8 T cells which will cause the damage. So which is type 4. And this, so it is both CD4 and CD8 T cells. Cells cause damage. So this is a type 4 hypersensitivity reaction. And this responds to increasing the dose of immunosuppressive therapy. Suppressive therapy. So it responds to increasing the dose of immunosuppressive therapy. Okay. Okay. Second is acute humoral rejection. Humoral rejection. Acute humoral rejection. Okay. Acute humoral rejection is now, this is because of antibodies. This is due to antibodies which are formed after the transplant. So this is type 2 hypersensitivity reaction and it is due to antibodies. So the recipient is forming antibodies against the donor kidney after the transplant. So due to antibodies formed after transplantation. After